Good morning, Leeds United fans. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. How does it feel to be top of the league? It still feels good, doesn't it? Even on a murky, murky? Is that the word? Murky? A murky Tuesday morning. How are we all doing, everybody? Get your comments in the section below. Some interaction and engagement on this in, on this, on this entire channel at this moment in time is fantastic. The Luke Ayling getting mobbed video has nearly reached 60,000 views, which is very, very great. Thank you so much for everybody who's tuned in and put some nice comments in there. You've all been watching the other videos as well, so hello to a lot of new subscribers. Uh, just uh, if you haven't, everybody, and you do want to watch, we are back this evening with the debrief from 7 o'clock. Me and the lads are going to be going through everything Leeds United and it's going to be a really good chat, a real positive chat. We've been getting loads of live viewers for the debrief in the chat. You know, we had 1,500 live viewers last time for about an hour and a half. So shout out to all of you guys. It's been, you know, the interaction has been fantastic at this moment in time. So make sure you're checking out that later on this evening. We're piling out content here as well, everybody. We're recording Generation Leads. We're recording ATP across the pond today on the Patreon. Please make sure you head on over. And uh, for four measly pounds a month, uh, which uh, which goes towards the channel, you can um, bask in around about three hours worth of content. So there you go. Anyway, your Leeds United news today. Before I get started as well, everybody, we've had um, a lot of interest when it's come to merchandise on the channel. I've collaborated with a company called Back4, and uh, the link is in the description below. It is well worth it. The, the merchandise is unreal. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. And I didn't want to do it by myself, and I wanted to source someone who I trusted, source someone who really enjoyed and uh, was a Leeds fan himself, and so we could align a little bit on merchandise and clothing. Link's in the description if you're interested in that. If you're not no problem. Right, okay. Let's get into the Leeds United uh, discussion today. So what did I want to discuss? Well, Chris Wilder, um, the the sort of uh, sort of devil, uh, the evil figure uh, for Leeds United over the past sort of like five years, really. The man who uh, we didn't really have a rivalry with Daniel Farker, did we, when it came to Norwich and Leeds in that Bielsa period? It was... Marcelo Bielsa and Chris Wilder are not from the great one. It was from Chris Wilder, who seemed to be even promoted uh, with Sheffield United. He seemed to still be rattled by, obviously, Patrick Bamford and those Muppets in Leeds. Was you know, Listen, he, he got very emotionally involved in, in that whole Leeds-Sheffield United thing, didn't in that 18-19 season. But why are we talking about Chris Wilder? I hear you cry. Well, he's been commenting on Leeds United and he's been using us as an example of how to change a negative scenario into a positive one. And doesn't it feel good? Doesn't it feel good how these things just go full circle? A man who evidently hates Leeds United and pretty much has said so in the article as well. He turns around and says, I'm not a big advocate turning around and complimenting other clubs in my county. And literally he's saying that he doesn't want to comment on how good leads are and how much we've been able to turn a bad situation into a good situation, which I think from your perspective, from my perspective, from everyone's, everyone's perspective, how Leeds have been able to turn this around is staggering. From where we were in the summer, from me saying I think we might finish in the top six and maybe go up through the playoffs, to then me thinking, I think we will go up through the playoffs, to then me thinking automatics could be on to them. Me thinking, I think we will go through up through the automatics is a ridiculous cycle of progression from the whites. And it's not just being viewed upon by us Leeds fans. It's been viewed upon by the outside media. People are talking about us winning the league now. It's almost a certainty for people, even though there's only a point separating us, Ipswich and Leicester. And Leicester have got a game in hand. Leeds are now seen as that side who are unstoppable at championship level. And it's so interesting that Chris Wilder is discussing on and off the field antics and he's referring, he's referencing the Leicester City game when we beat them 3-1. He's talking about the atmosphere. He's saying, I need to cultivate that into a positive thing next season. We're in a really negative frame of mind and we need to replicate, we need to replicate Leeds United. Isn't that fantastic hearing that from Chris Wilder, a bunch of Muppets at Leeds United. Yeah, even our sort of, our biggest sort of enemies in this football world when it comes to personnel are now compliment in the whites and what a great situation that is uh, to be in now tactically I wanted to speak on something today which gets me going a little bit and you're going to be surprised at what it is Jorginho Rutter we spoke about it yesterday on the channel hernia minor surgery I don't think it's going to be as serious as what people 
are suggesting. I think it's going to be a minor thing. I think Watford may be a little bit too soon for him, but with the progression when it comes to medical in the football sphere and just the the, the, the general sporting sphere, I don't think this is going to be a long-term Problem for Jorginho Rutter. Now he's literally played eight, nine games. He's got assists, he's got goals, he's got assists, 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 assists. He's pretty much involved in every single Leeds United attack and goal, really, when it comes to it. The the sort of relationship that he's established with Chris Somerville is something of um, yesteryear in terms of partnerships and, and synergy and cohesiveness. It's, it's beautiful. But my point is, I think Leeds United have done this strategically. There is no way, in my opinion, that they would suggest right now with, what, eight games to go, eight games to go, that Jorginho Rutter goes for surgery right now. I think they would have elongated this process. I think they would have said, look, give us till the end of the season before you go for big, big surgery. If they were, you know, really worried about this and the length of it. Leeds United have got eight or nine games left now. I believe it's eight. Eight games left now to secure their Premier League status, to get back there, to get back on top of the world in our eyes, back in the Premier League, back where the world's eyes are looking at a Legion. And we are a Premier League side. I don't care if it's our arrogance, but we are. Listen, they would not risk letting Jorginho Rutter have surgery now if they thought that it was going to be a season defining surgical process him you know being out and and not being able to get back into the fold for these remaining games that would be lunacy for Legion United you would rather have a 70 75 percent Jorginho Rutter for this running even if he's injured even if it's causing him a little bit of pain you turn around to him you've heard it multiple times before in football and you just say look Jorginho give us till the end of the season then you can go off for surgery we've got what a three-month break you can do it then you can rest and recover so Leeds United have done this strategically They've done it tactically and they don't feel that this is going to be such a major surgical process that it's going to keep Rutter out for the rest of the season or with three, four games left. This guy is so important, so, so important to Leeds United's running that they have done this in the right way. But what I wanted to speak to you guys about is it's not just the process of getting rid of Georgina Rutter and letting him go for surgery. But it's when he's back. I don't think it's going to be for the Watford game. Might be for the QPR game or Blackburn, whoever we've got after that. But for me, the question now is, who do you put in? Who do you put into that number 10 role? Now, Perot, no, not for me. I don't think that has ever worked with Pat Bamford. I think we look predictable. I think they morph into each other's roles too much. And by that, I mean, I think we don't really have a understanding and I don't think they have an understanding of where they're supposed to play. They seem to still get confused with each other on the pitch. Who drops deep, who goes. Now, well, look, we know Pat Bamford is the number nine, but even when Perot is playing, you see them almost bumping into each other. I don't think those profiles work together whatsoever. I've heard people saying Chrysensio Somerville, you cannot lose Chrysensio Somerville of a lot wide where is he being the most productive this season out wide 18 goals or whatever it's been 10 assists it's been ridiculous ridiculous so I don't think you can turn Chrysensio Somerville into that number 10 I think you've got to keep him out wide you keep him out wide you spread the opponents thin as well centrally and that aids the central players it's, it's helped Rutter massively it's helped Bamford massively so I would not be having Somerville in there. I don't like the profile as well of Somerville and Bamford together. It doesn't work. They both run with their heads down. They don't look up enough. Look, look I'm not saying they're bad players, but I don't I don't like that. I don't like that partnership in the 10 and the 9. So I'd keep Cree out wide, and I think Cree out wide massively helps uh, Furpo as well. He attracts the attention. That uh, overlap is always on with Junior Furpo. Cree Somerville is a massive component in Junior Furpo's pro, um, progress this year. Do not interrupt that. The man, in my opinion, who slots in there is Wilf Nonto. Now, for me, a lot of the time you get Cree Somerville as well going on his left side. It's not always inverted. It's not always inverted. He will go on his left side. So he utilizes that wide, uh, the, the width a lot more for me than Willie Nyota. Willie Nyota cuts inside consistently. Inside consistently, 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 consistently. We saw him at the start of the season. I mentioned this uh, in the Cardiff game in particular. We saw him playing in a false nine and I thought he was really good. I thought he was really good in that false nine. And early on in the season, we were looking at him and thinking he's going to be the big, he's going to be the best player for us this season. In that false nine, I thought he was good, which is almost the cam roll in itself anyway. So for me, you put Willignon to win there. Not Yoel Perot, he's not explosive or dynamic enough. 
I believe Willian Yonto's ball striking ability, his balance, his ability to go one side, then the other, as in left, right. We saw his ability on his left and his right foot as well, his ball striking ability at the weekend. He's been tempting fate for that strike for about three weeks now. He is that number 10. He's got everything you need in that number 10 role and opposition sides will not predict it. I love him in that role. And that means as well, you can bring DJ back in on the right who, you know, when he's coming this season has just been brilliant. So for me, that is the way you go. You keep Chris Somerville out wide because that fir- that relationship with Firpo is excellent at this moment in time. It's productive on that left side and he hugs the touchline a lot more than Willie Nonso who naturally inverts. You have to put Somerville in leave him out wide and keep Nonso or put Nonso in that number 10 role. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful option for Leeds United and just shows our strength when it comes to rotation. Guys, uh, to finalise, a little bit of interesting news when it comes to Ipswich, actually. Wes Burns looks like, uh, I believe he hobbled off the other day uh, for Ipswich Town and it looks like he could have a bit more of a major hamstring injury. Now, this is interesting because Kieran McKenna came off and looked very, very concerned when it came to Wes Burns injury. Obviously, he hobbled off. They had a fantastic result of the weekend, but we know Wes Burns has been a massive contributor, a massive facilitator in them doing so, so well this season. So, that's a big blow for Ipswich. It's a it's a it's a big positive when it comes to Leeds, but there looks like there's going to be a few players potentially out for that return date, especially when you're looking at someone like Jorginho Rutter and Wes Burns and the significance and influence both these players have on their respected sides. So one to keep an eye on there. Uh, really fascinating um, one there. Now Leeds can replace. We know I've just mentioned Nonso. We've got Anthony. We've got many many players who can replace in terms of quality. Ipswich. The question mark is always going to be there. There's another one as well, Connor Chaplin, who had a back strain. They don't know if he's going to be back fit and firing. But as I've mentioned several times, the beauty of what Ipswich did was they invested very, very well in January. They're going to be there right till the very end. And it's got, once again, form and results are huge in football, obviously, because we've seen the likes of Southampton who were on a reign of terror when it came to a ridiculous run of form. They've dipped off a little bit. They do have two games in hand, but they've got to win those two games in hand to get 79 points. Obviously, us and Ipswich are on 82, 81. But you do look at Southampton now and you maybe see them as the side that could drop off when you're looking at likelihood. Ipswich's January signings were huge, you know, and the form of Amari Hutchinson, who's been fantastic recently for them. I feel the sign of Sami Ento, Kiefer Moore, we mentioned Lewis Travis. I think they can lose a Wes Burns right now. And that was the importance of their January window. So they've done remarkably well when it's come to that. And Ipswich, for me, are going to be there right till the end. I did mention they'll get top two. Listen, it could still happen. I think that big question mark is still going to be over Leicester now. The beauty of reeling Leicester in is the top two positions are open now. They're open and they were not open at the start of the year, which is great news for Leeds. There was three teams fighting for one spot. Now there's four teams fighting for two spots. Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I want to hear your thoughts on what we've spoken about this morning. Nonso, Somerville, Perot, who goes in that 10 role for you? Do you bring Jade and Anthony in? I want to hear your thoughts on all of the topics that we've discussed this morning. As I said, head on over to the Patreon if you want some bonus content. The merch, well worth it. If you don't like it, no problem, but I've done it for you guys as well, because you guys have been asking me in the DMs, Connor, have you got any merch out? I have now. So make sure you check that out. i um, got a couple of good sales uh, through already. So I know you guys are enjoying it. Make sure you do so. Check out SofaScore for all of your analysis, everybody. Well worth it with the affiliate link with One Leads. It is absolutely free and you get some bonus bits on it as well. We're going to be back with the debrief this afternoon, this evening, I should say. I'll see you in a bit. Cheers. Cheers.